many of us are interested in what you, meaning Berkshire, are buying, and you won't tell us that. Using Charlie's principle of invert, invert, always invert, maybe you can help us by suggesting what to avoid and stay away from. Specifically, what in the investment world today strikes you as folly, fad, unsustainable, crazy, or dumb? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say this. I can't recall any time in the last 30 years, at least, that we've bought a new issue, have we, Shirley? I can't think of one. No, no. I mean, the idea that somebody is bringing something to market today, a seller who has a choice of when to come to market, and that that security, where there's going to be a lot of hoopla connected with it, is going to be the single cheapest thing to buy out of thousands and thousands and thousands of businesses in the world, is nonsense. You know, so and, I mean, and when it carries a seven percent commission, yeah, it, or it, higher, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So you know, you know, you know, it can't be the most attractive thing. Now, you know, it, but people get excited about what's coming and all that sort of thing. But I will guarantee you that that if you have thousands of opportunities among stocks all over the world, and most of them are not being promoted or being sold with special commissions in them or something else, and then some other security is coming to market that day, when the seller picks the time to bring it, as opposed to just this auction market uh, operating otherwise, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense to, even be, to spend five seconds thinking about new issues, so we don't think about them. And we also, uh, you know, there's industries we know they may have a wonderful future, but we don't have the faintest idea who the winners will be. So we don't think about those either. So there's a whole lot of things we don't think about. And we have a, Charlie and I have a number of filters that things have to get through very quickly before we're willing to think about them. And, and sometimes we're thought of as rude. Probably Charlie's thought of that way a little more often than I am. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we're thought of as rude because people will call us and they, say, they start explaining some idea to us. And it just doesn't make it for the first filter or two. And so we just... We think we're saving their time if we just politely say, you know, that we just have no interest and we don't want to have you finish the sentence. Uh, I mentioned earlier how you, an auction market prevailing in the, uh, in the stock market will, will offer up extraordinary bargains sometimes because somebody will sell a half a percent or one percent of a company at a price that may be a quarter of what it's worth, whereas in negotiated deals you don't get that. An IPO situation more closely approximates a negotiated deal. I mean, the seller decides when to come to market in most cases, and they don't pick a time necessarily that's good for you. Uh, so it has, I think it's way less likely that in scanning a list of 100 securities that are trading in the auction market, uh, well, in the uh, 100 IPOs, if you scan 100 IPOs, you're going to come up with something cheaper than scanning 100 companies that are already trading in the auction market. Uh, it is, it is more of a negotiated sale, and negotiated transactions are very hard to get bargains. If you take the houses in Omaha, you know, somebody that lives next door to somebody who sold their house for $80,000 and their house is more or less comparable, they're not going to sell it for 50. It just doesn't happen. The people are, it's too important an asset, and they're cognizant of what it brings, uh, what is being brought for similar properties. That's what happens in negotiated sales. Now, if on the other hand, there was some a whole bunch of entities that owned one percent of each house in Omaha, and you had an auction market in those one percentage points. They might sell it damn near anything, and occasionally they sell at crazy prices. So you're way, in, in my view, you're way more likely to get incredible bargains in the in the uh, in an auction market. It's just the nature of things. And the IPO is closer. Sometimes there will be IPOs in terrible markets, uh, and they may come very cheap. But by and large, that is not when IPOs come. They come when the seller thinks that the, the market is ready for them. And uh, uh, they, 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 come with, they come with an informed seller uh, thinking it's a pretty good time to go public. And, uh, you know, that you'll make better buys, in my view, in an auction market. Well, the first question, is it entirely possible that you could use our mental models to find good things to buy among IPOs? The answer is sure. 
there are a zillion IPOs every year, and buried in those IPOs, I'm sure there's a, there are a few cinches that a really intelligent person could find and pounce on. So, welcome. On the, uh, but the average person buying IPOs is going to get creamed. Uh, so, if you're talented enough, why, sure, that will work. Yeah, the because office. the IPOs are normally small enough uh, so that they, they won't work for us or their high tech where we couldn't understand them. And so, by and large, if Warren is looking at them, why, uh, I don't know about it. <laughs>